local agriculture, and that's a, a difficult definition, you know, a lot of across the country, like, what does that mean, you know, local to Vermont, local to within 50 miles of Burlington, local, you know, within the Northeast, within North America. Eating food that's grown in your town, or the neighboring town, or in your state. Having an awareness of what is possible, um, what is available, and when, and doing your best to take advantage of those opportunities. I eat as local as it gets, I suppose, eating from my own garden, um, but I'm definitely a fan of Eat Local. Being aware of what you put on your plate, who throw it, how it was grown, and that it didn't have to travel very far and emit all these unnecessary carbon emissions. structure ever so from, like from this point on for the, the rest of their lives they're free roaming free ranging happy cows okay so my name is Tyler Tyler Webb um, and my wife Melanie and my son Wyatt are uh, owners and stewards of Stony Pond Farm here in Fairfield Vermont that it's, it's something along the lines of 85% of the cow herd of all cows in the United States are owned by farms averaging 30, owning 30 cows or less, which is pretty amazing. It's a lot of small farms, but like 90% of those cows go through processing facilities owned by three companies or less. The plants are so huge, they're running 10,000 cows a day processing through these plants. One of them comes through sick like that and contaminates the equipment. It contaminates all the equipment, all the burger that runs through. That's why they have to recall hundreds of thousands of pounds at once. And if, you, if you're getting E. coli contaminated burger running through equipment, it's because it has crap on it. Like people are eating crap and so that that was you know the, the conclusion there was you know the only feasible way to accomplish this task rather than addressing how we're raising our cattle and growing our cattle in the first place was to irradiate or use ammonia to, to kill the bacteria so now you can eat a steak with crap on it you just won't get sick you know i mean it's absurd if we have earth and healthy soils below and the sun shines and the rain falls the grass is going to grow and a cow is going to go out and she's going to harvest that and get her own feed and she's going to spread her own manure and she's going to convert that protein into milk or meat which is then available for you you know and as farmers you know we're, we strive to to reach this level of partnership with our cows the burlington farmers market's really a wonderful place for us it's 27 weeks long you know on a busy i've been told on a busy week 10,000 people can come in and out of that place the great thing is that it's really difficult on a large scale for us to reach that that whole population you know but i can tell the person at farmers market and they can tell their person and somebody can come out and see it at our farm that's what we want is this viral spread of, of this movement and it starts with that with that personal relationship and that connection i think it's just a matter of you know knowing where your food came from you know i mean i, I I've never been in a community that is so by local, you know, driven, and, and it's pretty awesome to see. This um, dedication from the general public to continue to purchase their food when they can and to continue to participate in farmers markets is critical to the um, economic viability of agriculture. It's kind of a have to. And we're in a good place. I think we're continuing to. Um, to recruit more people being interested in that. 
We put a lot of energy and effort into um, farmers markets in the summertime. For us, that's really how we can talk to people, share recipes, uh, educate the consumer, um, talk to them about the benefits of, of pasture-raised meats. I hope that we are, you know, an important part of that puzzle, you know. Um, I think this market has been here for 31 years, this is the 31st year, and um, I think we're just now starting to realize the impact that we have on, you know, the, the community and, and the, the city, and, and I think at the same time the city is finally starting to realize that as well. change over the years. We've been around for about 26 years. Um, primarily our mission is economic justice and economic opportunity for Vermont's family farms. And we have a vision um, of you know, a vibrant local agricultural system that supports these farms, provides the economic opportunities for the farmers as really the backbone of, of our rural communities and our rural heritage. Um, and, and everything growing up out of there. But sort of the, the idea is if, if Vermont farmers succeed, then Vermont succeeds. We found that a lot of the sort of regulatory changes that we want to make are oftentimes we're bumping up against federal regulations and federal laws that say, no, Vermont, you can't do that. And so the idea of free enterprise farming is, is to come up with, um, to break down those barriers, whether they be regulatory, whether they be sort of marketplace um, pressures from, from sort of the industrial scale ag system. So my wife and I opened the Kitchen Table Bistro about eight and a half years ago, um, which is several lifetimes in restaurant years, and uh, you know, it's, it's been great and the reception has been better than we would have ever imagined from from the very beginning. Most of our purchases are local and we're, we're really happy for that to be the case. Not so much because of the buy local movement per se, is that you know, we, we like who we buy from and it's the relationships that we have with, with the farmers and producers that we buy from and we feel good about knowing personally where things come from and who made it, who, who put their hearts into what they did to allow us to put our hearts into what we do here. The rooftop garden opened last uh, summer, in the summer of 2010. We like to call it a small farm up there. We grow a significant amount of food there that goes directly into uh, patient food service. I do think that we're leading the way in terms of using healthy food as medicine. Um, and I think that many states are following suit. There's lots of other leaders out there as well. Um, I think that you know we talk a lot about the cost of healthy food, but it's cheaper than a bypass. A patient would get a room service menu once they have a diet from their physician, and they would open the menu and it would look much like a, a high-end hotel menu. About 30 options to choose from for entrees. There would be a seasonal soup, a seasonal baked uh, dessert, seasonal fruits and vegetables, and they would get to choose whatever they want. As a hospital, we should be leading the way to healthy eating. It's kind of like a scary thought. Everybody thinks, well, you can't eat healthy, you can't eat local because it'll cost so much more. Um, that it's not a possibility, but it really is. It does take time and energy, though, more than anything. About five years ago, we signed the Healthy Food and Healthcare Pledge, which is a pledge, it's a trifold pledge to improve the health of the community, our patients, and the environment. Statistically, you know, we benchmark with other hospitals. We're, we're below the 50th percentile in terms of cost. Local food is not as easy as it sounds, um, but the rewards are very high when you do it well. So I think one of the things that we struggle is just the time to manage it. Rather than having one or three or four major vendors, we have partners with over partnerships with over 30 vendors, and it just takes time. From our standpoint, the more that we're involved, in addition with the restaurants and the chefs, the better it's going to be for the farmers. They need to know that 
we're serious about this and that they can count on us to grow their things and that we grow by it. We're constantly looking and trying to pass the savings on to other Vermont hospitals also. Just like Bread and Butter Farm, we'd never thought of a second name, so Bergenite was Bergenite. And it's just a simple idea of um, introducing people to the farm for the first time. You know, something that could cross uh, boundary lines, something that was just open to all, that would be inviting to all, um, to come and check out what we're doing at the farm. People say there's a goal. Good time for families, and, and uh, we didn't expect it to be huge. We thought maybe 7,500 people a week, and it's definitely exploded into much more. I think we've had upwards of 350 to 400 people. Um, small. Daddy, yeah. look. Uh, nice, dude. Henry, do you have anything to say? Yeah, but then we'll die, you know? Take a piece of basil, wrap a tomato up. <gasps> I think the level of, of consciousness in Vermont is, and I don't know why, but for some reason there's a level of consciousness about wanting to support this sort of, you know, agriculture and, and these sorts of endeavors that isn't, it doesn't exist in other states. But I think we can be a real model and, and maybe export these ideas uh, and lead the country on, on a lot of these fronts and show the country that it is possible to have sustainable, strong, vibrant communities in local agriculture. And you don't need huge industrial scale systems to, to feed the population. Well, Vermont is, tends to be, in general, I think, pretty innovative. It's almost like a lab for this kind of thing, so we can be, you know, take risks and experiment with these kinds of things and be more nimble. Statewide, it's a, a small town feel, and so you feel like you can actually be a part of it. You're not just a small number in a huge area. You're a fairly big part of your community and so just the idea that the little bit that you do can be a big part of the overall. Burlington is like one of the healthiest cities in the country and so people who care about what they're putting in their body care about where it came from and the process that goes into it. So I think that the health aspect is really big. I have never seen such a saturation of people who are interested and invested and active in producing and consuming locally made products. It seems like Vermont is a small enough state that some decisions that are made on the local government level are more far-reaching, more effective. Um, and Vermont sort of has that community awareness, community help friendly atmosphere that makes local food big in this state versus others. Um, and our soil is very rich. It's not dry like Florida or out in the Midwest. So we don't have to worry about adding bad chemicals. It's just naturally delicious. We do actually know the people that we buy from. Our guests know them and they're a face, they're a person and it's not just a farmer, it's not just a company or business out there, it, it's people. And, and so when you know that you're supporting people, it's easy to feel good about spending you know, an extra dollar for your tomatoes or whatever than you know, going to a store and buying something from some faceless place out there that, you know, sure they might look pretty and there are people out there, but we don't, we don't know them, there's no connection and here there are connections. It's kind of funny, we're almost like totally reversing to the way it used to be. And, you know, people look at this and wow, this is such an unbelievable movement. But basically, we're just kind of like turning the clock back to what it used to be. 